two playoff teams battle for supremacy. The Los Angeles Temptation take on the Atlanta Steam next. I just want to be given the chance. You were the pioneers that built women's football. The opportunity to succeed. Or even to fail. You are the league of their own. Figure out what the f you need to do mentally to be able to sacrifice everything for the girl next to you. You better knock the f get out of her. Put the hurt on them first. Keep them on the ground. Stick your foot on their throat. LFL Football Night has arrived to Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome inside the booth of LFL Football Night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco. We've got an interconference matchup, the Atlanta Steam versus the LA Temptation. Now Los Angeles comes into this game 3-0 on the doorstep of an undefeated regular season. And Atlanta 2-1, their only loss on the year earlier against the Chicago Bliss. Usually when you have that kind of a regular season, you are playoff bound. That is the case here in two weeks. So I ask you, Bobby Huco, if you know you've punched your ticket to the playoffs, what is your strategy coming into a relatively meaningless game like tonight? Well, regardless of your playoff destiny, you have to worry about in two weeks, two big games. LA plays Seattle, Chicago plays Atlanta. It's all about momentum tonight. Whoever wins this game, it's like a playoff atmosphere tonight, is gonna to get the momentum going into August 20th, those conference championship games. Now, I think that momentum and mojo is more important perhaps for Atlanta. They need that psyche. They've lost to Chicago countless number of times. But let's talk about the two coaching staffs tonight. We'll start with Los Angeles. Head coach Tui Soenoa, ever since he's taken over the ranks, he's been under fire here that he does not have the demeanor or the control of the locker room that you need as a head coach. And then more recently, his offensive coordinator, Jeff Loudon, also fielding some criticism for his play calling and a scheme that a lot of people think is very vanilla and not up to par in the LFL. What are your thoughts on the coaching staff in Los Angeles? The consensus around the LFL is that Tui Suinoa is a great defensive coordinator, but not necessarily a great head coach. He can control that defense, but overall around this team with these alpha females in that LA locker room, we don't know if he's doing a great job there. And offensive coordinator Jeff Loudon, his own players are criticizing his play selection. That is never good. The coaching aspect alone is going to be fun to watch tonight. Now for Atlanta and their coaching staff, they've been criticized for not winning the big game. Here's an opportunity against Los Angeles tonight. How much of the blame of losing the big game in Atlanta goes to the doorstep of Dane Robinson? Well, it all starts from the top, the head coach down. They never win the big game. They have talent every year, great talent, but they never advance in the playoffs. Against Chicago, they never beat them. Tonight, they need that mojo. They need a win against LA. Their four leaders have to step up. Dina Wojowski, Lauren Ziegler, Dakota Hughes, Adrian Purnell, they all have to step up tonight. A lot of questions remain for both teams. How many will be answered tonight in advance of the playoffs? It's the Los Angeles Temptation versus the Atlanta Steam. Say it with me, kickoff is next. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Welcome back to LFL Football Night in Atlanta, Georgia. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco on the call. It's the Atlanta Steam hosting the Los Angeles Temptation. I am fired up about this one. One of the premier matchups of the year. This is going to be fun. That is Lauren Ziegler with the deep kick. Ninochka Cloud will not return as Los Angeles will take over first and 10 at its own 10 yard line. Quarterback Ashley Salerno, when I spoke to her before the game, her stats right there, not a great year, but no interceptions. She told me she didn't travel all the way across the country to lose. She is here to win. She's treating this like a playoff game. Salerno having a roller coaster season. Decent numbers on the field, off the field. We talked about the alleged striking of backup quarterback Kiara Patterson. She really wants to put all that behind herself and play football. And that's a good looking start. Carmen Borso, 11 yard carry. Let's meet the starters for LA. Delaney Hall, wide receiver. Danielle Harvey, tight end. Diana Takarangi, tight end. Ninochka Claude, wide receiver. Megan Hansen, center. Carmen Borso, 
Running back. Ashley Salerno, quarterback. Making her first start at wide receiver, Nanachka Claude replacing Cynthia Schmidt, who's out with a shoulder. That is a reverse handoff to Laney Hall. And Hall getting blown up against the wall, but not before gaining nine yards. We've got both players mic'd up. Let's listen into this collision. Look for Delaney Hall to get a lot of touches tonight with Schmidt out at wide receiver. Actually, Salerno, that will be her number one target. A good looking opening drive here for the Temptation. Now a second and one ball at the 20 of Atlanta. This is Salerno dropping back to pass, now taking off with it. And a modest gain for Ashley Salerno, a five yard carry as we meet the defensive starters for Atlanta. Amber Clark, corner. Quilla Franklin, corner. Adrian Purnell, safety. Lauren Ziegler, safety. Jessica Salazar, linebacker. Keon Harrison, defensive end. Brittany Dimery, defensive end. The two safeties, Ziegler and Purnell, they have to shore up that secondary again against one of the greatest quarterbacks the league's ever seen. That's a good looking open field tackle by Jessica Salazar on the F-150 Carmen Borsell. Jessica Salazar having an outstanding season for Atlanta. In fact, she's up for Rookie of the Year honors in the LFL this year. Jessica Salazar in that defense will be tested tonight. That is a defense that's ranked toward the bottom of the league at number six. Now facing Ashley Salerno and the number three offense in the LFL. Another handoff to Borso, just grinding out the yards. That is a six yard carry. That should set up a third and short. Borso, as always, incredible numbers. 43 carries, 258 yards. In her locker, she has a sign on top of her locker. It says, Bene the D V G. Means I came, I saw, I conquered. She is definitely a beast. Borso, the numbers not really off the charts great. It was really the touchdowns. She scored 10 touchdowns this season. That leads the league. Leads the league and then average per carry. She's always over five yards per carry. I love watching her play the game. A third and one keeper by Salerno. That was Adrian Purnell coming up from the strong safety position. Purnell not given credit for one of the bigger hitters in the game. We saw a bit of it there. Purnell can hit and Salerno, she slid last week, not this week. What a collision between two of the really superstars of the game. You would think with this game meaning nothing for the playoffs, Salerno would be sliding. She told me she is treating this like a playoff game. No sliding. She's going to try to run through people tonight. A first and goal at the two-yard line. Handoff for so. She could not get going as we talked about it. Rookie of the Year nominee, Jessica Salazar. Watch Salazar pin her ear back. She comes off the edge. This is not easy, fighting through a block and bringing down one of the most powerful backs in the league. Now a second and goal. Ball remains at the two yard line. That is a look at Jessica Salazar. Now getting the start ahead of Dina Wajowski at the middle linebacker position. Well, she has earned that role. She can cover sideline to sideline better than anybody on that Atlanta squad. Here's a second and goal play. Salerno to the goal line. And I believe she was stripped. That is Amber Clark. What a turnover deep into Atlanta territory. That is what you do, and that is how to play defensive football. You make it offensive. She was being brought down by her teammates. Clark came in, saw the, the stop was there on Salerno. Watch what she does. Purnell makes the hit, watch what Clark, she just goes after the football and literally stripped it from Salerno. Unbelievable defensive play. Yeah, I thought Adrian Purnell had the strip there. Purnell made a great tackle, but Amber Clark, to have the awareness to strip that football, what a turnover here. As Dakota Hughes in this offense now going to work. Ball at about the 10 yard line. That is a toss left, Brittany Demery. And Demery, an impressive start to this game on a nine-yard carry. That was head coach Tui Suanoa, also the defensive coordinator's biggest concern, the running game of Atlanta, Locklear and Demery. He was not concerned about the passing of Dakota Hughes, surprisingly. 
And speaking of surprises, look at Brittany Demery get the edge on the defense. A nice nine-yard carry. Getting back down to the field, Dakota Hughes, we talked about her comfort level heading into the playoffs. I feel like with this being my fourth year going into the playoffs, I've been fortunate enough to go to playoffs every single year that I've been here. So there is a definite comfort level with that, but obviously being in tune to, to four years of the same offense, I'm, I'm real comfortable with it in this fourth year. Hughes is comfortable going to the playoffs. You see her stats right there, solid this year, 24 out of 42, zero interceptions. She just needs to win the game once she gets in the playoffs. And we've got a media timeout on the field with Amber Clark in the Atlanta defense coming up big. Don't hesitate out there. You saw it there. Is there anything out there that we didn't already practice against? Then do it. That is head coach Dane Robinson of the Atlanta Steam as we welcome you back to LFL football night. A very intense atmosphere for a game, at least on paper, that is meaningless. 100%. That was Dane Robinson talking to his new acquisition, wide receiver Jolie Efezekai, who he picked up as a free agent from Pittsburgh this week to be the number two receiver going into the playoffs. And what a start for the 5'9", 170-pound Brittany Demery. A six-yard carry that'll set up a first and ten. She is a machine so far in this game. That offensive line of Atlanta destroying Najah Christmas and Tiana Anderson just blowing them away right now. Dakota Hughes has not had to do much this season. A really well-balanced offense for Atlanta. I think that could bode well for him in the conference championship and possibly beyond. A first and 10 ball at the Los Angeles 24. That is Hughes back to pass. Looking down the field, buying time. A good looking check down to Lauren Ziegler. Yo, I'm gonna fuck you the fuck up if you do that shit again. Do that shit again. Do that shit again. Fucking raggedy ass bitch. You wanna tell me this is not a playoff atmosphere? Chelsea Hart, who can talk trash and hit with the best of them. Unfortunately, it wasn't her hit. It was Lily Granston who came in late with a cheap shot to the head. But Lauren Ziegler thought it was Chelsea Hart. A second and two handoff going back to Ziegler. And look at the speed on Ziegler again meeting up with Chelsea Hart and Lily Granston. That was a seven yard carry setting up a first and goal Atlanta. Let's introduce you to Ziegler in this offense. Angela Eliason, wide receiver. Lauren Ziegler, wide receiver. Ariana Barton, your tight end. Adrian Purnell, tight end. Dino Jowski, your center. Jesse Locklear, running back. Dakota Hughes, quarterback. As always, this game's gonna fall on the shoulders of quarterback Dakota Hughes. She has to pull this team through in big games like this against LA. A first and goal, looking to Ariana Barton incomplete. We sat down with Danielle Harvey, who was in coverage. I chose to take a knee during the national anthem, basically to take a stand. And the stand is saying that um, this song does not represent me. It was written when I was not even considered to be a human being, um, as well as all the injustices that are going on with the black and brown community. Um, the Black Lives Matter movement is why I chose to take a knee. A very controversial move by Danielle Harvey, just like Kaepernick in the NFL. A lot of people did not like that move around the league. A lot of people did, but it's her right to do whatever she wants. Down on the field, that was Tijuana Anderson. A great tackle on Jessica Salazar, limiting her to two yards. Getting back to the Danielle Harvey point, that was not a very popular move amongst the team and in the locker room in Los Angeles, nor was it across the league. But that is her First Amendment right, and we here in the LFL will always recognize your rights. Quarterback Dakota Hughes has this team driving inside the 10-yard line, the red zone right now after that key turnover on Salerno's fumble. A third and goal. We've got our first penalty of the night. This could be a false start on Atlanta. I didn't necessarily see it. It looked like it was a false start, so it would have been earlier on. Gregory Edwards on the call. Prior to the snap, false start, offense. Five-yard penalty, remains third down. That's a big call right there. I'm with you. I didn't see anybody jump, and that hole was there. That could have been a big play for Atlanta, except they're going five yards back now. That penalty will push him back to the 12-yard line. 
That is defensive coordinator and head coach Dane Robinson. Obviously not happy with what's going on in the field, although his defense did come up with that massive stop against Ashley Salerno and the L.A. offense. From the shotgun, Dakota Hughes back to pass. There's pressure on the edge and just getting it away. That is intercepted. Delaney Hall. So what you can do, we can do better. The L.A. defense bending but not breaking. Delaney Hall having an outstanding year at safety for L.A. Just an overthrow by quarterback Hughes. Hall playing free safety out there at center field. Makes the pick. Not good for Atlanta right there when they're in the red zone. So both offenses coming up blank inside the red zone. Give credit to defense. I know we always want to see points in offensive football, that there is such thing as defensive football as well. You're right, but that was all on the quarterback. The receiver was open. She just flat overthrew the football. A first and 10 screen, that's going to Nanachka Claude. A seven yard connection. They are really high in Los Angeles about Claude getting the start ahead of an injured Cynthia Schmidt. Wide receiver coach Rory Gary, he said Claude was specifically a defensive player. Then one practice, he saw her speed and hands. And then with Schmidt out, decided to put her wide receiver and said she has such a high ceiling. She is somebody to watch in the LFL. How about that Atlanta interior defense limiting Danielle Harvey to a four-yard carry? Danielle Harvey, what a story. Two years ago, she had ACL surgery. People questioned if she could ever come back and play. She is back over 100% playing great on both sides of the football. Danielle Harvey really has not gotten a lot of attention here through the years, as Los Angeles has always had a star-studded lineup outside of the recent controversy with taking a knee with the national anthem. And that is Salerno connecting with Kiana Takarangi. However, we do have a flag down on the field. What a read by Salerno. She saw the corner blitz and went right to Takarangi. Practice snap, 19, false start. Number 19 offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. That is a big time penalty on Delaney Hall. Come here. Hey, when you're a beat, you need to give me effort. You can't go when I play. Kind of fucking simple. Bring her down. Dane Robinson not happy at all with Salazar. That was man-to-man -man coverage with Takarangi one-on-one, and she got behind Salazar, and then Salazar kind of gave up. That'll do it for us here for the first quarter. It has been a defensive battle with both defenses bending but not breaking. Back to Atlanta, Georgia for LFL football night. Let's go down to the field. Hey, you guys just showed that you can move the ball on anybody. They weren't shit when you took it down there, were they? Keep it up, keep it up. A lot of confidence on the sideline. That is head coach Tui Soinoa acting as the offensive coordinator. This offense has been able to move the ball. That was a great point. I actually thought Salerno was going to score. I thought she's going in the end zone, and then Clark stripped her with an unbelievable defensive play. But Tui Suano was right. The offense was moving at will. A first and 15 after that false start on Delaney Hall that cost this offense six points. Going back to work now, a first and 15, a corner blitz. That was Amber Clark having quite the first half, putting the heat on Ashley Salerno. Hey, Coach Dean Robinson, who was also the defensive coordinator, said that was the game plan, the blitz Salerno. And right now, their pass protection is not there. Nobody is picking up the blitzing cornerbacks, and Salerno read it too late there. Incomplete pass. Kiana Takarangi, Megan Hansen, and Danielle Harvey, one of the better offensive lines in the league, but struggling there. As Atlanta is coming with some blitzes, here they come again. Amber Clark again getting to Salerno and just not giving her time in the pocket. Salerno looks a little bit rattled. I don't blame her. They came again with double corner blitz. She looked deep to see Takarangi, but it was not even close. Great play again by the defense of Atlanta. This Atlanta defense trying to negate, giving up 130 yards through the air. That is league high. And that's a look at Jeff Loughton, the offensive coordinator for Los Angeles. He knew that he could pick apart this defense in the secondary. They're just not getting a chance. And with Schmidt out at wide receiver, Dane Robinson knows they don't have a go-to number one receiver, so they're going after Salerno. This time Salerno not finding a receiver down the field. 
did manage four yards on the carry. That is Jessica Salazar on the tackle. Watch how they have Salazar spying on Salerno. Everything she does, she's going to follow. What a tackle by Salazar. Get there! My line! Get there! Finish it! Cat lunch. Here we go. Finish all three. One, two, three. Finish! Coach Robinson with that playoff intensity telling his defense again, looks like they're coming with another cat blitz to get after Salerno and don't stop until she is on the ground. Here comes that Atlanta crowd. This has become one of the better atmospheres in the LFL, but not if you're Los Angeles. A fourth and 11. Here's Salerno trying to evade the rush and getting the edge, but not to the markers. A great looking stop by this Atlanta defense as Los Angeles will turn it over on downs. Again, a corner blitz had Salerno baffled. She eludes that rush, but watch the hit by Harrison. A shoestring tackle, or that would have been a first down for LA. Quilla Franklin that time from the corner position. And give credit to Dane Robinson there, their defensive coordinator. He knows the weaknesses in that secondary. He's not given Ashley Salerno an opportunity to expose those weaknesses. 100% right. Instead of sitting back in cover two where she can pick him apart, he is sending the corners on blitzes right after Salerno. A first and 10 for Atlanta. That is a draw handoff to Jesse Locklear. Not much there, about three yards. Tijuana Anderson and Najah Christmas on the tackle. Both defenses are bending but not breaking right now. This is hard-nosed smash mouth football. It is fun to watch. This is a playoff atmosphere. This is good. Yeah, if you wanted a lot of offensive fireworks, this is not the game for you. These are playoff teams. They have a great run game, a solid defense, certainly capable of opening up the passing game. That is an inside handoff. Adrian Purnell. That'll be an eight-yard carry for the seven-year veteran. Cornell, every time she touches the football, she makes positive gains. In fact, she scores points. You see right there, she has two touchdowns. I asked her if she wants the ball more often. She said it's up to the coaches. She just wants to win, and she'll do whatever they say to do. Cornell is one of the few players in the league that can play both sides of the ball at an all-fantasy level. Plays tight end on offense, and certainly we've seen her at strong safety on defense. A first and 10 handoff. That is back to Jesse Locklear. A five-yard carry by Locklear. Getting back to your point on Cornell, as an old offensive coordinator who loves football, I'm curious why they don't give her the football more. Every time she touches it, she makes big plays. There are a lot of weapons on this offense in Atlanta. Just take a look at the top left of your screen. That is Jolia Fezekai, the recently signed wide receiver. Just not a lot of footballs to get around. A second and five. Hughes under center handoff. Jesse Locklear, a good looking five yard carry. And oh, that is Lily Granston. Come on, take your ass on. Take your ass on. Hey, hey, hey. You're good, you're okay. Bye bye, bye bye, bye bye. Branson is known to throw hands. She can fight. I'm telling you, watch this. Out of nowhere, she comes up and throws it. Bam! What a hit. You could see Dakota Hughes fired up, trying to get this offense going. Setting up a third and one there at the Los Angeles seven-yard line. Hughes back to pass. Now rolling left. Has a receiver. That is Adrian Purnell. They're going to mark her down at about the one-yard line. One-on-one -on -one inside the red zone. She is an imposing figure going against the defense. They should do this more often. Easy play, a basic out route. She almost got in the end zone. Purnell has made a career on those release plays into the flat, almost getting into the end zone. Now a first and goal. A little toss play to Brittany Demery. That was blown dead. This could be another false start on Atlanta. A devastating penalty. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, five yard penalty, remains first down. Dakota Hughes tried to get the team up on the line of scrimmage for a quick snap before LA was lined up and they fooled themselves. They jumped, which brought them back to the six yard line. Not a good play at all for Atlanta. This offense has got to be more disciplined. 
backing itself up to the six yard line. That is Ziegler in motion. The handoff goes to Demery. Look at Megan Hansen. Hansen spelling Monique Gaxiola at the middle linebacker position and has had a pretty good season. Put your hand in my fucking mask again. Dirty ass bitch. Lauren Ziegler not happy at all about the way Chelsea Hart is treating her tonight. That's the second time she went under the face mask into her face, and Ziegler does not like it at all. I don't blame her. The officials, when they officiated Los Angeles game, are always watching blows to the head. We've documented it all season. It's mainly Chelsea Hart and Agam Chichindu. The starting corners, they play very physical. This is Dakota Hughes. Good-looking pass. Are you kidding me? Dakota Hughes throwing across her body and finding Lauren Ziegler on a tight rope. Dakota Hughes moves the entire defense of Los Angeles, making like she's throwing right to a the guy. She comes back one-on-one. -on -one. Ziegler wide open in the corner. Great play by Hughes. So far this season, Lauren Ziegler's number is just modest. Not outstanding, not exceptional like she always is. But you know what? They're not throwing the ball as much with this running game. Reggie Jackson may be Mr. October in baseball. When, when it comes to the LFL, Mrs. August in September has got to be Lauren Ziegler. That is when she really turns it up. Here's the extra point attempt handoff to Brittany Demery using that load and pushing her way into the end zone. So Atlanta striking first, converting on the extra point. They are up seven to nothing. When Brittany Demery goes vertical, she cannot be brought down. The entire LA defense could not bring her down. We talk about the F-150, Carmen Borso on Los Angeles, but Demery is just as strong. Brittany Demery, not talked about a lot, got in great football shape. You can see she plays both sides of the ball, starts at running back, opposite Jesse Locklear, and you could see it there, starting at defensive end. A first down handoff here to Carmen Borso. This Atlanta defense really keying in on number 10, Carmen Borsell. A good-looking tackle by Birdwell. We talked about L.A. offensive coordinator Jeff Loudon's play selection. They try a draw play right there. That's usually after you threaten the ball down the field. They haven't thrown the ball down the field, and they're trying a draw play. That's why it didn't work. Carmen Borsell making up some good yardage there. That was a six-yard toss play. They are committed 100% to running this offense through the F-150. Carmen Borceau is a great athlete. She was a heptathlete at Cal State Long Beach. Do you know what that is? No clue. It's track events. It's like the Olympics. Seven events, she wins that at Cal State Long Beach. A third and two handoff going to Borceau, and that'll be enough for an L.A. first down. But that looks like maybe a strip. Keon Harrison. The officials now coming in and saying Carmen Borso was down. I'm not so sure about that. Wow, that was close. We don't talk about Keon Harrison that much, but she's been here in Atlanta since day one. Watch this trip. This ball might be out. You can't really tell. It looked like Carmen Borso's knee may have hit. And they're not going to even challenge that. I am surprised that that Atlanta bench is not challenging this call. In a game like this, you have to challenge that. A first and ten. That is Salerno out in the open field, gaining seven yards. She can beat you with her legs or arm. Possibly the best athlete at the quarterback position. Well, definitely the number one running quarterback in the league, but we question her sometimes because she wants to run a lot. She's a great pocket passer, but sometimes she doesn't let the play develop and turns it up like that. That'll take us to the two-minute warning with Atlanta up seven to nothing. Back to LFL football night. Ashley Salerno in this Los Angeles offense trying to get on the scoreboard. They trail this one seven to nothing. We talked about their offense before the game. Very surprising. This LA offense was supposedly high tech running and passing. Zero points so far. Salerno in the shotgun. Here comes that blitz again. Keon Harrison staying home and making the tackle on Salerno. You really got to hand it to Coach Dane Robinson. He came up with a defensive package that has Salerno rolling all over the place and not knowing where the run, stay in the pocket, not knowing what to do. Great package by Robinson. 
A third and three handoff to Borso up the middle. And that should be enough for a Los Angeles first down. Plenty of time remaining as Los Angeles does have a timeout and almost a minute 20 left. Borso is the go-to back when you get inside the red zone like this. It's either going to be Salerno or Borso. They should key on both of them. A first and gold. That was a little bit of a weird sequence. If you're going to kill the clock, why not do it early on? They let about 20 seconds marked off the clock. Prior to the snap, false start, number seven, the center. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. I don't think that was the center. I think that was communication between the quarterback, Salerno, and Jeff Loud, the offensive coordinator. We talked about how they question the call sometime. That was all communication right there, that penalty. There seems to be a bit of a power struggle, kind of like Trump's administration offensively. Jeff Loudon and Ashley Salerno, you don't know who the offensive coordinator is. You could see Salerno has a lot of input, and at times, it seems like veto power. Well, she should. A quarterback with her stature in this league for so many years, she knows the game probably better than Loudon does. She should be able to call the plays. Salerno right here, spread option play. She should have pulled it. Salazar blitz came right in toward Borso. Nobody outside, but she hit it off, nothing there. This much maligned Atlanta defense is really playing well tonight. Let's go down to the field in LA's bench. We're doing tight pistol right, 77 C6. Or tight pistol left, 77 C6. That was what we're doing on the first play. Exactly what we spoke about earlier. There's the quarterback telling the offensive coordinator what the play is going to be. She runs this offense more than the OC does. That is part of the power struggle inside that locker room. We'll see how it plays out into the playoffs and potentially the Legends Cup. As you said earlier, Ashley Salerno certainly has the merit to do so. Now a second and goal. Dina Wajowski coming up the middle on the blitz like a bat out of hell. This is where they miss Cynthia Schmidt. It's an easy read, it's a corner blitz again. You gotta get rid of the football, but there's no experienced receivers outside that know what to do with that corner blitz, and Salerno has nowhere to put the football. This offense is going backwards now. Salerno back to pass over the middle, nearly intercepted. Dina Wajowski really coming on here. She lost her starting role in the middle linebacker position to Jessica Zalazar but make it an impact here late in the first half. Wojowski and Salazar, they are both frenetic players. They're crazy, they're all over their field, great defensive players. A fourth down now. Los Angeles will need to get into the end zone. Over the middle, and this one is intercepted. That is Jolie Fezekai. The recently signed Fezekai from Pittsburgh. Coming up big for this defense. A Fezekai reading Salerno's eyes, makes a great break on the football, comes up with a huge interception. That's the first one of the year for Salerno. What a break for Atlanta. Ashley Salerno not getting the number of pass attempts you would want. Crazy, why are we doing crazy? It doesn't matter, you can do it anywhere on the field. The struggle continues on the sideline of Los Angeles. Meanwhile, back out on the field, that is Dakota Hughes just heaving it into the stands. That was intended for Jolie Fezekai. We saw Salerno's numbers, 0 of 4, and an interception. That is not what you expect of number 8. 1, 6, 9 on the back side. Memphis I, left 1? Yeah, Memphis left not, uh, 8, 6, one, uh, 4. Mark White, he's telling instructions to the quarterback, the routes he wants to run. He wants to post up high, the fourth four underneath. It's up to Dakota Hughes to pick out the right receiver. A second and 10 ball at the Los Angeles 23, a high snap, sailing over the head of Hughes, and Hughes losing her footing and still managing to connect with Lauren Ziegler. Wow, what a play by Hughes. Again, a bad snap by Wajowski. Over the head of Hughes, but we got a penalty. Holding, number three, Atlanta. 10-yard penalty, repeat second down. Adrian Purnell being called for the holding penalty. That is one of the better plays of the year. Dakota Hughes having to adjust 
through that ball sailing over her head, keeping her footing and connecting with Lauren Ziegler. That shows you the kind of athlete Dakota Hughes is. Make something out of nothing. A bad snap by Wojowski. She was stumbling back there. In the coverage, somehow found Lauren Ziegler open for a game. Atlanta is out of timeouts. Just 17 seconds remaining. And set back at their own 17-yard line. This is Hughes back to pass in the pocket. Throwing down the field, has a receiver. I take it back, great coverage there by Lily Granston. They were looking toward Efezekai. At 6-1 with blazing speed, quite a target, but this is her first week in Atlanta. They still have it meshed as quarterback to wide receiver. They will, a great acquisition, but they don't have the timing yet. Much like baseball, the teams that have a shot at the postseason, this is about the time they make the key free agent acquisitions, and Efezekai definitely fits that bill. This is Jesse Locklear. An interesting call, a nine-yard run. The clock continues to run inside of five seconds. They will stop the clock here, so Atlanta should get one more shot at the end zone. You really got to question that call. Yeah, it's positive yards, a good gainer and all that, but it took all the time off the clock. Now they're down to five seconds. So we were mistaken. Atlanta did have a timeout remaining and choosing to use it there with about five seconds on the clock. Let's go to the L.A. bench. If you see the uh, the fake dive or whatever, play action, just drop back, okay? Drop back and help even deeper if you have to. Look for the Ziegler and them guys trying to cross in front of you, okay? And then collapse. Naja, let's go. Don't run into her. Get back there. Coach Tui Suinoa also serving as the defensive coordinator Knows to be looking for number 14 here, Lauren Ziegler. Who's going to keep the safeties deep and an umbrella tuck look. Let him go underneath that, then collapse on him. A fourth and seven to the end zone. And dropped. That was a perfectly placed ball to Jolie Efezekai. And Efezekai could not come down with it. That was what you call a competition drop. She put it out there, one-on-one -on -one coverage, good coverage by Granston. Efezekai had both hands on the ball and simply dropped it. The coverage was there, but bad play by Efezekai. That'll bring us to the end of the first half in a tough defensive battle with Atlanta leading it seven to nothing. Back with halftime festivities after this. Welcome back to halftime of LFL football night. Mitch Mortaza and Bobby Huco in a seven to nothing game with the Atlanta Steam having the edge here over the Los Angeles Temptation. Not a lot of points here in the first half, but I thought it had the intensity, passion, emotion, kind of like a playoff atmosphere. 100%. Don't tell either of these teams this game means nothing. They're playing like a playoff game. Defensively, they're playing excellent football. Offensively, the run game's there. The passing game is not there yet, but football-wise, great first half. Now, let's talk about the run game. For Atlanta, it was Jesse Locklear gaining 21 yards on four carries. Opposite her, Carmen Borso, the F-150, with eight carries for 43 yards. Not a lot of offensive output, so what are the keys for the second half? Well, both teams have to continue with that defense playing at that high level. Offensively, both teams have to pick it up in the passing game, specifically Atlanta. Dakota Hughes has to play big to beat this L.A. team. It's up to her. Now, both offenses did manage to move the ball quite a bit in the first half. They just didn't put up a lot of points. In fact, only one score through 20 minutes of play. It was here in the second quarter when Dakota Hughes dropped back and found her favorite target, Lauren Ziegler, on a four-yard touchdown reception. That was our sole score of the half, seven to nothing, as we take a look at the first half stats. Really impressed by both defenses. They were both bending, but they didn't break. Offensively, that's what it's gonna come down to. Who can open up in the second half? As Los Angeles and Atlanta return to the field for the final 20 minutes of play, we get you ready. The second half kickoff is next. LFL Mobile, giving you access to the gridiron goddesses of the LFL with exclusive photos, videos, live game reporting, and fan promotions. LFL Mobile, download on your Android or iPhone. Back to LFL football night for the second half as we look at our starting quarterbacks. Both quarterbacks not lighting it up. Salerno, 0 of 4, one interception. Hughes, 3 out of 8, one interception, but the only TD of the night to Ziegler. That is Lily Granston who will get us underway 
In a game that Los Angeles trails it seven to nothing. A high kick, very nonchalant Jesse Locklear. Now gonna bring it out to the field, gets back to about the five yard line. I'm not sure of the logic of number five there at all. I think that she thought that ball was going to go off the field into the crowd, but it did not. It hit the wall and came back. That was a live football. Very nonchalant by Locklear. That could have been a disastrous start for this Atlanta team. You could see Dakota Hughes just looking at Locklear. That's just bad football. Locklear should know the ball. Watch it. Watch where it goes. It's still in play. Pick it up and run. Because of Locklear's poor decision, Atlanta will have to start here at its own five-yard line. A first and 10 handoff goes to Locklear. As Jesse Locklear trying to get that yardage back does gain six. Great drive block up front by center Dina Wojowski. Kind of a bad read though by Locklear. She went inside, the hole was outside. That could have been a big gainer. The six yards does move the ball out to Atlanta 11 yard line. So a little more real estate for this offense to play in. Initially starting at the five yard line. A second and four, they're gonna run a reverse. That is to Lauren Ziegler. Great tackle by Chelsea Hart. Oh, bro, what's up, bro? I'm a chick, fuck off. That's all unnecessary. So I have respect for you, so let's play. I respect me too. So let's play like football players. Chelsea Hart and Lauren Ziegler have been ear jacking each other all night long. They're getting in each other's face. Finally, Adrian Fernell comes over and say, hey, let's call a draw. A third and two ball at the Atlanta 13 yard line. That is Jesse Locklear still in the backfield. The ball does go to Locklear. And look at the tackle by Naja Christmas. Christmas having an all fantasy type season at the defensive end position. What a play by Christmas. She shucks off. Adrian Fresnel comes down, then makes the play. Unfortunately for LA, Atlanta got enough for the first down, but great play by Christmas. Lock! Hey! Lock that shit up! Locklear did manage to gain three yards, so that was an Atlanta first down. Locklear just continues to grind. Three yards here, four yards here, five yards there. And this Atlanta offense is moving the ball. Now an option keeper, Dakota Hughes. Megan Hansen making a great open field tackle on Hughes. Great hit by Hanson. They tried the counter. He came back with the option. She tucked it under, got six yards, but got destroyed by Megan Hanson. Hanson second in the league in tackles, just behind Kendria Robinson of Austin. A second and four for the Atlanta offense from the shotgun crossing pattern. And that is complete to Lauren Ziegler in a bit of a rugby scrum here. After all that, only about a two yard gain. But what about the concentration from Lauren Ziegler? She is one of the best at catching the football, but I really got to question the throw or the call by Dakota Hughes. Man to man, it's a two man coverage. She was not open, tried to force it in there. That two yard reception now setting up a third and two. Ball at the Atlanta 24 yard line. Again, this offense is able to move the ball. They just can't put any points up. Hughes back to pass into the flat. And I don't know how Adrian Fernell came up with that. But they're going to call that a catch. That was a one yard catch. What a hit by Chelsea Hart. That is hard to do to knock Adrian Fernell back like that. Again, not a great pass, not a great call. Chelsea Hart just lands on her. Atlanta's passing game has been shut down by the secondary of LA. A fourth and one. What about the concentration on Adrian Purnell to come up with that? A vital fourth and one handoff. That's going to Jessica Salazar. And Salazar will pick up the first down as Atlanta continues to move. Again, great blocking up front for Atlanta. Wojowski, Purnell, and Barton. A huge hole for Salazar. Fourth and one, they convert the first down. A first down at the Los Angeles 18 yard line. Atlanta looking to extend its lead already up seven to nothing. And for Los Angeles, they are fast running out of time. A first and 10 handoff, that's to Jesse Locklear. So the two running backs really delivering for this Atlanta offense. Salazar in this time, Locklear. 
you really got to like this offensive game plan by Mark White. It's all running game, hardly any passing at all, but they're chewing up the clock, moving down the field, not giving the high-powered L.A. offense the football. Second and four ball at the Los Angeles 12. A pair of running backs flanking Hughes. This one goes to Salazar. No, Hughes going to keep it herself. A good-looking setup and execution by number 18. That'll be good enough for an Atlanta first and goal. Sometimes I give Hughes a hard time saying she runs like a newborn horse, but she gets yardage. She makes the right read. She always gets yardage down the field. A newborn horse. They're all over the place. If I was Dakota Hughes, I would not take that as a compliment <laughs> either, I guess. It's first and goal. <laughs> Luckily, she's got a great arm. Ball at the five of Los Angeles. Salazar and Demery in the backfield. They're going to fake the handoff, running into Salazar and Dakota Hughes. All she could do was get rid of that football as Naja Christmas was right on Hughes. She's looking at the official. The official thinks that might be intentional grounding because it didn't get past the line of scrimmage. I don't know if they're going to call that. It looks like they're going to just call that an incomplete pass. That'll move it to second and goal. This is the area where you've got to go to a Brittany Demery and a Jessica Salazar. Much like Seattle executes with Stevie Schnorr down here, they're getting a little cute down here in the red zone. 100% right. Look at Demery. A beast in the backfield. That's when you give her the football. And they're going to go to Demery. Look at the tackle by Lily Granston. And Granston telling Demery a little about it. That was 120 pounds beating 170 pounds in the open field. I can't tell you how good a tackle this is for a defensive back. Going against Demery, you mentioned 170. Like a wrecking ball coming in there. Unbelievable hit by Lily Granston. That is how you play football. Ranston has really matured into one of the better overall safeties in the game. Everybody knows her as a big time hitter, but she's also a great cover safety. A third and goal for Dakota Hughes, a high snap. Does manage to hold on to it. And now stretching into the end zone. Touchdown Atlanta. That is a leader right there. What an athletic play. Naja Christmas off the edge. You got to contain. She comes inside, which leaves the outside wide open. Hughes takes advantage of the cut to back inside. Goes through three people. Her knee might have been down, but they give her the touchdown. The young horse does manage to get into the end zone. Suddenly, Bobby Huco, a big fan of Dakota Hughes and her scrambling ability. She can run. I told you, she runs not pretty sometimes, but she is very effective. Now the extra point attempt. This will be a one-point attempt. Brittany Demery right up the middle. Atlanta on top, 14 to nothing. And that'll take us to a media timeout. It's the hometown steam starting to roll. Back to LFL football night. Just under three minutes remaining here in the third quarter. And Los Angeles has its work cut out down 14 to nothing. That was Ashley Salerno trying to connect with Danielle Harvey. That is the story of LA's passing game all night long. A quick hot read, Harvey wide open. She just flat out dropped the football. We talked about it at halftime. If Los Angeles is going to have a shot here in the second half, They've got to open up this passing game. A second and 10 at its own 15. Salerno calling her own number, now optioning out to Carmen Borso. That'll gain five yards. There was actually good defensive coverage on that speed option. They had the pitch covered, they had the quarterback covered. They got five yards, but Atlanta's defense is playing A-OK -okay right now. That has been the Achilles heel for Atlanta, has been their defense. And tonight, thus far, pitching a shutout. That is an inside handoff, good-looking run by the Aussie, Kiana Takarangi. Takarangi, a great athlete, inside handoff, great drive blocking down the field by Danielle Harvey. L.A. moving the football. This is the time of the game where Atlanta, over the years, has folded. They cannot let L.A. go in and score right now. That has been the headline here in Atlanta. They have no problem getting ahead of their opponents 
It's holding on to the lead. That's been the challenge. Just ask the Chicago Bliss on a first and 10. Complete, no dislodged. What an open field play by Lauren Ziegler. Blowing up Carmen Borsell. A trip set, they tried to run the Nachka Claus deep and Borsell underneath. Lauren Ziegler said, you're not having this. I tell you what, we have a couple hard hitting safeties in this game with Lauren Ziegler and Lily Granston. We talk about Ziegler all the time on the offensive side. She is a beast in the secondary also. That is Salerno calling her own number. A gain of four yards, so this LA offense is moving the ball. This is the time of the game where Ashley Salerno usually calls her own number for the rest of the game. She told me before the game she wants this game badly. I would not be surprised to see her running the ball all night. Without Cynthia Schmidt in the lineup, their number one receiver, LA has really struggled in the passing game. So yes, we are seeing a lot of the run attack, mainly by Ashley Salerno. And here we go again. This time though, Brittany Demry saw it coming. And we've got some pushing and shoving here after the play. Salerno not liking that Brittany Demry just sat on her. Jesus Christ, Ashley, stop running the ball. Hey, Coach Tui Suanoa frustrated his quarterback. Sometimes Ashley Salerno tries to do too much. That was a drop back passing play. She did not let it develop and tried to run nothing there. This should bring us to the end of the third quarter as Los Angeles does not get a playoff. So we are down to the final 10 minutes as Atlanta leads it 14 to nothing. Try not to hold, listen to Dakota, where you got to go and everything like that there. And once again, give her just a little bit of time when it's passes. We're going to go short routes there, all right? Okay. Like, get you on defense, you got to sell out. Sell out for 10 more minutes. Okay. Thank you for helping this team be at its best. The old lady still got low in the tank. Okay. Look at Dane Robinson as we welcome you back to LFL football night. He's got to be, and we have a lot of passionate, emotional coaches in this league, but he's got to be at the top of that list. I have never seen that before. During a stretching, when a player is stretching, the head coach flat out on his belly telling the player what to do. A fourth and seven, Ashley Salerno evading the rush and finding Megan Hansen. And that is why Ashley Salerno has had the success that she has had in this league. Especially late in games like this. She could have folded, got sacked, she gets hit right there, no. Salerno, the player she is, she makes a play, improvises, and gets a first down for LA. How about Megan Hansen to give Salerno an outlet? Now a first and goal ball at the one yard line. This is Ashley Salerno. And as Bobby Huco promised, Salerno starting to take over this game. That was a bad play by defensive end Brittany Demery. They do that play a lot during the season. Trips right, it's a quarterback sweep left. You have to get contained and force her inside for the linebacker. She let her get outside, she got the touchdown. You can see Brittany Demery losing her footing. She did have an angle on Salerno. Did you get the ball over? Flag is whether or not the ball across the goal. Yeah. You guys discuss it. Make sure that you guys are sure that it's not a touchdown. Then we're going to challenge that shit. Because he had to look over there. He's calling he had to look over there. The result of the play is a touchdown. There's no challenge by Los Angeles. The result of the play is a touchdown. A bit of confusion down on the field. Initially, they said Ashley Salerno was down at about the half yard line. After some debating with the LA bench, Coach Sui Noah was able to convince the head referee that that indeed was a touchdown. Well, the officials got it right. The entire LA coaching staff, led by Rory Derry, were telling them they got it wrong at first. They corrected themselves. This is the extra point attempt. Salerno taking it in herself. That'll cut into Atlanta's lead, now 14 to seven. We've seen this movie before with Atlanta. Atlanta better watch out. The captain of all the LA chaos, Ashley Salerno is doing it on her own. They're only one score down right now. We need to stop them. Salerno now trying to get behind her defense. Still a lot of, get, a lot of time left in this ball game. She's right, all they need is one stop, get the ball back the way they're moving the football. Yeah. All right, you got to let go of it. Offense is going to put us up 21 to 7. They have a, because of your work, it gave you a little breathing room. You got to let it go. You got to let it go. All right, you'll get another opportunity. We're going to go up 21 to 7 here. But once again, you, the work you did gave us a little breathing room. Good job. 
Dane Robinson coaching up that defense. And this is a handoff to Demery. And that is a loose ball. It looks like Megan Hansen on the recovery. Wow, like you mentioned, we've seen this movie before. You have to protect the football with the lead in the fourth quarter. The first play when they get the ball back, they fumble, it goes back to the temptation. Unbelievable. That looked like the strip was by Naja Christmas and Megan Hansen getting on the football. This is exactly what Los Angeles needs to get back into this game. Before the game, we talked about the leaders on Atlanta not letting their team fold like they usually do in the fourth quarter. Somebody on this team has to step up and make a play. This is exactly where a team's character comes in. And for Atlanta, it's got to be in the back of their heads how many leads they've given up to big teams like Chicago. And now they're about to give up a lead potentially to Los Angeles. A first and 10 play. Salerno buying time and dumping it off to Takarangi. And Takarangi making some moves in the open field. That is an 18-yard connection. As we get another look at this, we may have a penalty. That's the tail end of the play with Takarangi making moves and getting down to the five-yard line. Personal foul, number two, defense. That penalty will be tacked on to the end of the run, half the distance to the goal, first down. So not only the completion, but they're going to call a personal foul on Brittany Demery. You can just feel it in this arena. The momentum has totally changed. You can hear a pin drop in L.A. and Salerno are on fire right now. A little over 8.40 remaining here in the fourth quarter as Atlanta's defense tries to hold here. A first and goal. That is Salerno lowering her shoulder and getting into the end zone. You could see the fire of number eight. There is not a better competitor in the LFL. Completely destroying the Atlanta defense by herself. You would think this is the Legends Cup. This is a game where LA doesn't even need to win. They already made the playoffs. That is the difference between the LFL and the NFL. This, paper, this game on paper means nothing. But don't tell that to Ashley Salerno, Dakota Hughes, or anybody out on that field. They are playing to win. And that is the extra point. That is good. And guess what, partner? We've got a tied up ball game. Salerno following the block of Borso cuts in and destroys Fox Birdwell for point for LA. Way to go! Way to fucking answer back! That's how you do it! Let's go! I'm not sure who's more fired up, Ashley Salerno or Coach Sui Noah. LA seems to thrive in chaos. Look at the Atlanta bench right there. They're in shock like, here we go again. Unbelievable. A first and 10 for Atlanta's offense. Megan, Megan, play both A's. Don't drop, play both A's. They're keeping Megan Hansen in the A gap. Both sides of the center. She doesn't care about pass coverage right now. She wants to shut down the Atlanta running game. Atlanta going back to work, handing off to their workhorse. That is Jesse Locklear. And Locklear churning those legs, turning into a rugby scrum again. That is an eight-yard carry by Jesse Locklear. When quarterback Dakota Hughes was a rookie in 2014, she earned a nickname, the Cardiac Kid, the way she pulled games out. Let's see if she can do it tonight against L.A. It'll be interesting to see if they put their fate on the arm of Dakota Hughes or on the legs of Jesse Locklear. Thus far, it appears Atlanta's content with giving the ball to Jesse Locklear. A second and two now, again to Locklear, cutting inside, getting some great yardage. That was a seven yard carry and good enough for another Atlanta first down. That's a great point you made. Their game plan actually worked. It's the turnovers that are killing them. The running game, they've moved down the field, take time off the clock, score points, but the turnovers got LA back in this game. Atlanta's offense is moving the ball. And the real unsung hero thus far has got to be Locklear. Locklear, you're right. Demery early in the game. Lately, all Locklear. And we've got another penalty here. This should be on Atlanta. Perhaps another false start. Prior to the snap, false start, 13 offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. 
That penalty on Angela Eliason. I'm going to take a gamble here. I don't think you're going to hear that name in the postseason. No, you might not hear that name ever again. A key situation like that, a key penalty. But before that penalty, center Dina Wojowski again with a high snap. A first and 15 after that five-yard penalty on Eliason. They're going to go again to Locklear. This time only managing two yards. That was Tijuana Anderson on the tackle. That LA defense is starting to swarm. They are gang tackling right now. You can tell they've been here before. This is the team that has won championships in the LFL, and they are swarming right now. Atlanta, they seem this shelled right now. Ball at midfield as this offense goes back to work. Another high snap over the head of Hughes, and all Hughes could do is sail it into the bench. That'll set up a second and 13, so Wajowski continuing to have problems. Coach Dane Robinson is beside himself right now. He can't believe this is happening again. Right now, when they should step up to go in to score points to win this game, they're stubbing their toe. They're beating themselves. LA is fired up. Look at Atlanta, no fire at all right now. Wojowski, the center now for three years in Atlanta. You'd think they would have figured it out by now. That is something that has plagued her throughout her entire career with the steam are the irregular snaps. Third and 15 now, Hughes back to pass from the shotgun. Steps up in the pocket, throwing down the field. And dropped. An uncharacteristic drop by Lauren Ziegler in the end zone. That would have been a tough catch. Hughes scrambled in the pocket, stepped up, threw it behind her, which is the only place she could throw to have any chance. Watch this, it's short, it's below. Ziegler usually makes that catch though. Lauren Ziegler, everything's going against Atlanta right now. That wasn't the greatest ball, but Ziegler had a good opportunity at it. Those are ones she usually comes down with. I hate to say it, big players make big plays in big games, and I love Lauren Ziegler, but that could have been a big play. Fourth and 15 for this Atlanta offense. If they don't convert, they're going to give LA a really short field. Again, Hughes stepping up in the pocket and into the end zone. And that looked to be another drop, this time by Efezekai. The ball got there. The reason they signed her as a free agent to make this catch, yeah, you got coverage around you, but you're 6-1, the ball gets through, catch the football. Wow, they're blowing themselves up right now. I said it earlier, I'll say it again. We have seen this movie before. Atlanta is known for the big leads and then the absolute collapse in the second half. We are witnessing another collapse. They had this game in the bag, 14 to nothing at home against LA, just eat the clock away. Now they gave the game to LA right now. They're still in it, but LA's got all the momentum. Salerno in this offense going back to work over the middle and just not able to connect with Kiana Takarangi. Takarangi got behind the defense. She made the absolute right decision, one-on-one -on -one coverage against Jessica Salazar again. Takarangi went flying right by her, just a bad pass by Ashley Salerno, it should have been six. Salerno, really one of the more prolific passers in the history of the game. This season, it's simply just not been there. You're right, they're winning football games. There's a lot of chaos throughout the whole team, but this is not the same Ashley Salerno we've seen in the previous seven years. A second and 10 ball at the Los Angeles 23. That is Delaney Hall in motion. The ball goes to Hall. A good looking play. That was a 12 yard carry by Hall. I got to hand it to offensive coordinator Jeff Loud. We've been on him all night. That was an excellent call. A counter inside. Hall almost broke that. Great play by LA. They've got a lot of speed on the outside. Keep in mind, Cynthia Schmidt did not suit up for this game. They are expecting her back for the playoffs. That is their number one receiver, Hall being their number two receiver. Agam Chichindu, their all-star defensive back, she'll be back for the playoffs too. They're doing this without some of their superstars. Not to mention Sherry Awaga. Awaga, one of the better tight ends in the game, also not suited up tonight. That is Carmen Borso. That's good for seven yards. This LA team is just rolling right now. That's why Carmen Borso is one of the best backs in the LFL. There was nothing there straight up. She made a jump cut outside and got positive yardage. 
Morceau leading the league in rushing, possibly an early favorite for league MVP and perhaps maybe Offensive Player of the Year. She definitely should be in the running, having an outstanding year. She can do it all. She can catch the football. She can run the football. Great leadership on this team. A great acquisition two years ago by L.A. Approaching the two-minute mark, we've got a tied-up ball game. This is Ashley Salerno. Great blocking on the outside and walking into the end zone. That is 20 unanswered points by Los Angeles. What a seal block by Takarangi. She got two players, Brittany Demery and Fox Burkwell in the same play. They could not seal the outside, and Salerno gets in again. This is the first time that Los Angeles has led all night. A lot of people counting them out late in the third quarter when they were trailing this one, 14 to nothing with no offense. And just like that, they have returned to lead this game 20 to 14. And that should take us to the two minute mark as Atlanta now trailing this one 20 to 14. Back to LFL football night and next week, the playoff start. It's the Seattle Mist versus the Los Angeles Temptation. Take your motherfucking ass. Pet penetration. Get penetration. Play strong man coverage. Finish the game. Head coach Dane Robinson urging this team to rally late here. You can look in their eyes. The fire's not there. They look exactly like another team from Atlanta did back in February who folded in the second half. This is a great test for this Atlanta steam team. Trailing this now 20 to 14. Bitch ass niggas. I wanna ooh, I wanna beat their wives up. What do you think ha would happen if I beat their wives up? So cute. I don't give a fuck right now, bro. I wanna fight Sherman Grant and tell her meet me outside, my nigga, like straight up. Adrian Purnell fired up on that bench. In fact, we sat down and talked to Dina Wajowski about the trash talking. Is that a distraction on this team? For those that think that, you know, potentially the theatrics and some of the trash talking would take away from our play. The reality is that's what makes this team. You know, you are putting your personality, your energy, your love and passion into it. It can come out in a form that's either perceived as good or bad, but for us, it's who we are. Back to game action here. We That is it. I mean, we talked to Dina Wajowski. The extra point is not good. How much of that takes away from what Atlanta tries to do on the field? Well, their focus is not there. They're worried about getting in fights with LA's players, not worried about scoring a touchdown to tie this game up or win this game. They should be focused. That's all coaching right there. Salerno doing what she does best as Los Angeles is on top now, 20 to 14. Dakota Hughes getting her opportunity, known as the cardiac kid back in the day. We'll see if she can live up to that billing. She has to bring that team back to where they were back then. For the last couple years, all they do is lose in the fourth quarter. A first and 10 toss play to Locklear. Plenty of time remaining, and Atlanta does have a timeout. They're going to keep this on the ground. I like that call by OC Mark White. They've moved the ball successfully all night long against L.A. The turnovers killed them. A lot of time left. Move the football down the field so L.A. doesn't have a chance, if you score, to score back on you. That extra point missed by Los Angeles could be big as this is now a six-point game. Another handoff to Locklear getting the edge. A nice-looking five-yard run. Locklear did stay in bounds, so the clock continues to run as we near the one-minute mark. Another solid gain by Locklear. You mentioned she had a big night. She's not exciting, but she gets positive yardage all the time. Third and three ball at the 24 of Atlanta. A little crossbuck handoff to Locklear. That'll be enough for a first down. Atlanta will probably call its final timeout here. And Locklear staying down. Not sure if this is an injury timeout or a timeout for Atlanta. That has been their horse all night. She has had a great game. You mentioned all night long doing this, but this is not the time of the game you need to have a cramp. Most of the offense, and specifically the running game, has gone through Jesse Locklear. And that's a good sight if you're an Atlanta fan. Locklear got up on her own will and will return to this game. That is a great sign. Sometimes with a cramp, it'll stick with you for a long time. She got up and jogged it off. Good for Atlanta. 
first and 10 ball at the Los Angeles 23. As the clock continues to run, Atlanta did preserve its final timeout and now a dart trying to get it through traffic to Lauren Ziegler. Trying to go to her go-to receiver, nothing there. I tried to fit in that window, Slow down. And it's not there. Stop. You got 47 seconds. We've been here in practice. Slow it down. Hey, right. someone at Jolie now? Yeah. Look what you got. Stack, 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 right, stack, right. Smooth. Nine, four. That's Dakota Hughes admitting that she tried to get it in a very small window. Did not work out for him. Well, she ran through the window. The coach was saying, stop. When you get in the window, stop. Give your quarterback a target. She ran through it. A second and 10 ball remains at the 23. Hughes with a lot of pressure on her. And that is Danielle Harvey getting home. A big time sack in a key moment. The veteran coming through, as you mentioned, at a key time. Who else? Danielle Harvey stepping her game up and bringing down Hughes. That was an eight yard loss, setting up a third and 18 for Atlanta. And the Atlanta steam electing to call a timeout here. Okay, listen, if you're coming in, you're going to be the beat. So it's Jesse Nine, get, you six. Get to the sticks. Nine. Get to the sticks. That's your landmark, okay? A lot of strategy inside that Atlanta huddle. They're going to clearly look to the passing game now as the run game is pretty much null and void considering how much time is left. Well, the question is, do you go to your new receiver, a Fezekai, deep on the outside, or do you come underneath or to the corner to your go-to receiver, Lauren Ziegler? A third and 18. Atlanta's got to cover a lot of ground. This will be Dakota Hughes. This could be a holding call on Atlanta. You can see Adrian Purnell trying to plead her case. This would be devastating. It is just simply unbelievable how Atlanta kills themselves. Holding number three offense. That penalty is declined. Result of the play, fourth down. Interesting call by Los Angeles electing to decline the hold on Adrian Purnell, which will now set up a fourth and 11. What would have been third and 28. Now it's fourth and 11. With this offense, that's very makeable. Yeah, I think if I had the choice, I would set Atlanta back to third and 28. I think I would have done the same thing. We'll see if the gamble pays off. We've got another timeout here. They're going to want to talk about this all-important play a little more. The defensive strategy here has got to be protect against the deep ball, primarily to Fezekai and Lauren Ziegler. You two are the keys to this game right now. If you don't get to Dakota, she's going to have all day to find somebody, okay? Cover, cover. Watch the slots. Watch the slots down here. I'm telling you, you're too deep. Come up a little bit. Check them out. They might be throwing a quick slant or whatever. Great point by head coach Tui Suanoa. You need pressure on Dakota Hughes. 11 yards for this team is not a lot when you have a receiver like Lauren Ziegler. The two defensive ends have to get to the quarterback. Fourth and 11. And this could be the final regular season play for Atlanta. Another high snap. Dakota Hughes dropping back and throwing to the end zone. And over the wall, Efezekai could not come up with it. She had gotten behind the defense. I hate to blame the center, but I'm going to blame the center. That threw the whole play off. She was wide open. That would have been a touchdown. There's no way Dakota Hughes would overthrow this ball and with a regular drop back. Over her head, that's the ball game. It looked like a Fezekai, before going over the wall, had beaten Lily Granston. And that's a, that's a critical point. That center play, Dina Wajowski, cost him the game. In a lot of ways, put him at a major disadvantage. They're going to have to go back and take a look at that because when you're playing Chicago in two weeks, you can't make those mistakes. You've got to force them to make those mistakes. Little basic football. Snap the ball to the quarterback. She throws to a wide open of Fezekai. You win the football game. What happens? They do what Atlanta's been doing the last couple of years. They lose in the fourth quarter. It's, be it's best I don't shake hands. Real life is best I don't shake hands. You could see the frustration with Adrian Purnell in up and down that Atlanta sideline as we've witnessed another 
second half collapse by Atlanta. On the other side, you've really got to hand it to LA. I'm going to use the word chaos again. They got a lot of chaos, a lot of dysfunction, but they are simply a good football team that's undefeated. They're like the old LA and Oakland Raiders. Dysfunction makes them successful. And that'll do it for us here in Atlanta, Georgia. The Los Angeles Temptation rallied late and win this one 20 to 14 with both teams playoff bound in two weeks. For my partner, Bobby Huco, this is Mitch Mortaza. We will see you next week on LFL Football Night.